Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us here today. My name is Sakura Takano, and I'm the CEO of Rotary Charities of Traverse City. Working in partnership with changemakers, Rotary Charities provides funding, learning, and connections to address our region's complex problems and create community assets for all. Since its inception in 1977, we have awarded over $66 million to nonprofits, municipalities, networks, and tribal nations in Antrim, Benzie, Kalkaska, Leelanau, and Grand Traverse counties. Today, I'm so excited to announce that Rotary Charities has proactively granted nearly $407,000 to support 10 initiatives. These emerging needs grants include support for organizations working to bring much needed affordable housing projects to fruition, develop programs for youth mental health and access to critical mental health care services, expand youth after school programming and deepen acknowledgement of indigenous culture in our region. Several of the projects align with needs identified in the Grand Traverse Region American Rescue Plan Funding Priority Survey and were also identified through the Grand Traverse Regional Project Dashboard. These resources allowed our staff to have open conversations with organizations about vital projects that will improve the quality of life in Northern Michigan for people of all walks of life, but certainly our most vulnerable populations, people experiencing homelessness, low-income residents, families, and people of all ages experiencing mental health crises. These grants will allow several projects which would have fallen outside of our typical funding cycles and otherwise may have stalled due to critical funding shortages to come to fruition. With that, let's get started. First up, we're gonna hear from the Friendship Center. They have been awarded $41,600 to expand their Leelanau Investing for Teens program. Here to tell us more about their initiative is Executive Director, Rebecca Tenbrink. Good morning, thank you so much, Sakura. Um, Leelanau Investing for Teens, or also known as LIFT, we are a program through the Friendship Community Center in Sutton's Bay. We are an after-school program for middle and high schoolers in Leelanau County. We empower teens to discover and embrace their strengths by investing in their development and character through diverse and high-impact programming. Funding from Rotary Charities Emerging Needs Funds will allow us to hire a full-time middle school program coordinator who will help double our impact in Leelanau County by opening up middle school programming to five days a week at Sutton's Bay schools and one day a week at Northport schools. At this point in time, there is no other free after school program for middle school or high schoolers in Leelanau County. Our teens are searching for compassion, um, humans to see, hear, and love them, and LIFT is committed to making our programming as widely available as possible. These grant funds are allowing us to do just that, which will have a far reaching impact that will be hard to quantify. Thank you so much, Rotary Charities. We are extremely grateful and excited to get to work. Thank you so much, Rebecca. We're really excited to see this project come to fruition. Next up, we are gonna hear from Habitat Humanity and New Waves Church. They have been awarded $50,000 in support of the New Waves housing developments off of M72. Here to tell us more about the initiative is project manager, Tina Allen. Tina? Hi, thank you. So the New Waves United Church of Christ is an ecumenical nonprofit church and acts to help fill social justice gaps in our community. The primary need identified when we talked to the community about what they wanted was low cost housing. So the church happened to own 20 acres of property in Elmwood Township, where we were originally going to just build a church building, um, but decided to follow our mission and use that property to house people first. So people needed homes now, and we believe in acting on our faith. So we started moving the project forward now. These Rotary Charity Emerging Needs Grant Funds are being used along with donated funds to do the pre-housing development on the project. That includes uh, permitting a joint well, excavation building, and paving the roads. New Ways has partnered with Habitat for Humanity to construct a total of 14 homes that have shared open spaces where they can have gardens and build a community. Six of those homes will be Habitat home ownership homes. Seven will be 
low cost rentals owned by New Waves, and one will be a church staff home. New Waves is building partnerships with other area nonprofits like the members of Northwest Michigan Coalition to End Homelessness and Housing North to make sure this project provides for the needs of those in the lower income brackets. Thank you, Rotary Charities, for seeing the rental housing needs of our community and supporting this and other incredible joint community efforts to build homes. Your gift is especially important to us because it's the first one outside of our church membership beyond some of our partnerships. That first gift is always the hardest, and we're very grateful that you saw something unique and different and joined us on our journey of faith that social justice gaps can be filled when people come together to make things happen. Again, thank you. Thank you so much, Tina. I'm really excited to see this project right down in my neighborhood. Next up, we have another innovative housing project to share. Homestretch has been awarded $60,000 for the Vineyard View Townhouse Apartments in Leelanau County. Here to tell us more about it is Executive Director John Stimson. John? Hi, thank you, Sakura. Our vision at Homestretch is to provide decent, affordable housing for persons of low and moderate income. Uh, we go beyond that at Homestretch by maintaining the properties that we build, and we also perform all the property management and make sure that our residents are successful in their housing needs. Um, the grant funds, as you said, Sakura, we're going to be using for an eight-unit apartment complex located in Sutton's Bay Township. Um, it's a picturesque setting, has trails and views of vineyards. Um, it's accessible off of a bus route. But you might ask me why we need this grant. Since 2010, Leelanau County has seen a 12% decline in available rental units. Um, the degree of rent overburden within Leelanau County is concentrated within the lower income levels of 30 to 80% AMI, where over 65% of those households are paying more than 35% of their income towards housing. When you get down to the lower spectrum, the 30 to 50% AMI category, they're spending upwards of 70% of their household income towards housing. And that's egregious. Um, but there's a positive sign. And the project that we're embarking upon in, in uh, Sutton's Bay has several be benefits. And those benefits are business support to bring employees to businesses that need to grow and keep their doors open. Um, every time we install a project, it creates economic development with all the work that goes on before construction, during, and then after to maintain the units. Transportation, this uh, site is within an easy commute. Um, there will be less transportation needs on the folks that will live there. Uh, the environment, as I said, we're doing a carbon neutral project. So affordable housing to me is the ultimate asset to creating thriving communities. And I can't thank you enough for allowing us to um, participate in this program. Thank you. Thank you, John. It's uh, it's wonderful to hear back to back opportunities for more people to be safely housed in our region. Next up, we're going to go all the way over to Kalkaska County and the grant award is for the Kalkaska County Library. We provided $10,000 to update the Kalkaska middle and high school library books. Here to tell us more about the initiative is library director john Roberts. Hi, my name is John Roberts, uh, and I'm the director of the Kalkaska County Library. Um, so libraries find all sorts of different ways to say it, but the, but the mission of public libraries is basically to find ways to build community and bring people together and to support all the different types of personal literacies that add up to thriving communities. Um, our emerging needs grant funds are being used to triage the Kalkaska Public Schools, Middle School and High School Library Collections, um, which had not been cared for in any systematic way um, uh, for over a decade. Just a little background information, the Kalkaska County Library has operated the elementary school libraries here since 2020. And I wanted to point out, it was actually a Rotary Charity seed grant that allowed us the freedom to experiment uh, with a model to integrate um, our technology, our library catalog and circulation systems with the school library collections. Um, I'm really happy uh, to note that that model uh, has been an overwhelming success and we extended that operations model, our program to the middle and high schools uh, last year. 
Um, we're so grateful to Rotary Charities for these much needed funds. Um, it's going to allow us to replace hundreds, if not several thousand, um, tattered, obsolete, irrelevant uh, school library books and materials this year, um, a process that in normal uh, budget environments would normally take years, if not a decade or so. Um, these funds give us the ability to make a much greater positive impact on youth literacy in the near term. And so thank you very, very much from everyone at the Kalkaska Library. Thank you so much, John. It is really wonderful to see uh, the project grow um, from a first phase of working with the elementary schools and now being able to reach the middle and high schools. Thank you so much for your commitment. Next up, we're going to hear from Northern Blooms Montessori. They have been awarded $40,000 to build out the Northern Blooms Montessori Family Center in Traverse City. Here to tell us more about the project is Kate Robinson. Hi, Sakura. Thanks for that. Um, as mentioned, I'm Kate Robinson. I am actually a principal strategist with Further Degree and the project facilitator for Northern Blooms. Um, I'm so excited for this opportunity and for the support of this amazing grant. Um, Northern Blooms Montessori Family Center is a new and evolving community centric early childhood program, and we are committed to providing a quality Montessori environment built on an equity focused financial structure. Um, this unique model is adapted from an ongoing program in Grand Rapids, which I helped to design and launch. Um, gosh, just last year, <laughs> and it bases the cost of services on household income with three tiers of affordability that are all at or below competitive pricing in the area. Um, part of what makes this possible is including parent and family volunteers in the administrative and community building aspects of operation. Um, so not only does this help our business model, it also alleviates some of the common pressures uh, from lead teachers, excuse me, helping to support their well-being increasing retention and to avoid burnout. Um, another component of our equity lens is prioritizing fair wages and benefits for staff, including priority housing access with our, within our multi-use building, along with giving them a formal role in governance and policy making decisions. Um, a little bit about the program itself, that'll start out with traditional hours running Monday through Friday, and we'll have spots for up to 24 children, ages 12 to 36 months. Um, we're excited to be locating childcare close to workers and community in the new Common Grounds building on 8th Street. And although this space will be maximized on day one, our team's hope for the future is that we'll be able to expand both age range and capacity by replicating the model at other satellite locations close to businesses, giving more downtown employees a convenient option for childcare. Um, I could say a little bit more about the need for childcare at this moment, but I think it kind of can go without saying. Um, but we are so thrilled to have the support of Rotary Charities as we continue to build momentum and financial sustainability in this very challenging and critically important space of early childhood education. Um, the support will specifically provide funding toward furnishings and build out of the two new classrooms. So we're excited to say that'll have an immediate and direct impact on the development of children in our community. So with that, thank you so much to Rotary Charities for the amazing gift and thank you for the time today. Hey, thank you so much, Kate. It'll be uh, exciting to see kiddos uh, in the building and uh, getting their learning journey started. Next up, we have Goodwill Northern Michigan who has been awarded $60,000 for joint partnership to support a community policing program for the North Boardman District. Here to tell us more about the initiative is Outreach and Housing Navigation Manager, Ryan Hannon. Ryan? Thank you, Sakura. It's a, a pleasure to be here and hello to all of you watching this video. Thank you for, for participating. So in our Goodwill Northern Michigan, our, our mission and within our housing and homeless services department is to help make homelessness rare, brief, and one time for people. And we do that by bringing resources to help people end their homelessness right where they are. This grant fund will be helpful to pay for a community policing uh, program. And so there will be a dedicated police officer with using a community policing approach 
as part of the partnership with our street outreach program and our street outreach workers. And it will be beneficial for the neighborhood to help the neighborhood get to know the police, the people experiencing homelessness and helping to reach the people that need it most. Through our partnership with the Northwest Michigan Coalition and our Street Medicine Coalition, we'll be able to work together to help bring resources to help the people experiencing homelessness, not only with our housing first approach and bringing those resources to help people get connected, but also to help triage in a crisis situation, to have a more community and appropriate response to help people meet the needs rather than say a criminalization approach to uh, people who are, are having issues meeting their basic needs out in the public because they have nowhere else to go. This initiative is needed because homelessness is a terrible thing to experience. People are having a hard time meeting their basic needs while that important work to access the housing in our community is being done. Thank you so much. Rotary for, for supporting and, and helping this community initiative move forward. And thank you, Ryan, for being such a champion in our communities for those in crisis. We really appreciate you being here. Next up, we have the Northern Michigan Health Consortium, which has been awarded $50,000 in support of the development of a crisis wellness center. Here to tell us more about the initiative is Munson Healthcare's Director of Behavioral Health, Terry LaCroix Kelty. Terry? Thank you, Sakura. I'm very pleased to be representing the Community Crisis Services Action Team of the Behavioral Health Initiative sponsored by the Shire. We're working on creating a local community crisis center. As you know, these are very challenging times. And unfortunately, we find youth and adults in behavioral health crisis and our communities not having the resources that we need to address that. The good news is that there are proven options that can help people who are in behavioral health crisis. Overall, a good system includes, number one, a place to call, which would be a crisis hotline. Number two, a place to go, which will be our crisis center. And number three, a mobile crisis, someone to come to you. Our Crisis Services Action Team is incredibly grateful to Rotary Charities for this grant that will support the development of our Crisis Center. With this grant and additional funding from Northern Lakes Community Mental Health and Munson Healthcare, we plan to hire a project director consultant who will bring our plans to action so that we may create a center where people of all ages, regardless of insurance, can come when they need help. We won't be able to do this without community partnerships and ongoing support. This grant is an awesome example of the community support that we need to develop this center. We look forward to keeping you posted on our progress, formalizing partnerships, and letting you know ongoing what is needed for behavioral health in our region. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Terry. Up next, we have the Traverse City Area Public School, which has been awarded $45,000 to support a youth-led effort to raise awareness of the mental well-being and reduce the stigma of mental health among students. Here to represent the initiative is their wellness coordinator, Ty Schmidt. Thank you, Sakura. Um, thank you for this opportunity. And, and man, I just love learning all about these great initiatives. Uh, gets me excited for this for this community of ours, but I am proud uh, to represent Traverse City Area Public Schools to bring University of Michigan's peer to peer program for the very first time to Northern Michigan. Um, for those unaware, it's been uh, in existence for since 2009 and it's best practice research based uh, to provide supports to young people. Um, because we know that kids will go to their friends and their peers before they go to a well intended adult um, and what I love most about this. Uh, this program is that it was youth led, it was youth driven uh, early uh, this winter with some ideas from, from students at Central and West. Um, so we're proud and excited uh, to really to bring University of Michigan up here to provide these students and staff uh, with the tools like practical tools, everyday life tools about how to help when a friend comes 
uh, with, with a challenge or a struggle so that those kids know how to direct them to the resources they need. Uh, and really talking about stigma. Uh, stigma remains a massive issue uh, with young people talking about mental health. Um, so I'm really excited to see uh, what happens both at Central and West this school year. So it's starting, we're gonna have trainings in August with University of Michigan. Um, and I'm excited uh, to see what happens. Part of the training also is gonna help fund uh, dedicated space refuges, what we're calling sanctuaries, which is a working name uh, to help house the peer to peer program and a safe place for kids to come and talk um, where they don't just come when they're having a rough day, but they come whenever they need it, right? We all just need a breath in a moment. Uh, so this, these funds will help build out those places. Again, that was driven by kids at Central and West of, that was a need that they needed. Um, this program will also be supported by trained staff, TCAP staff, to make sure that it's sustainable and runs smoothly. Um, and I'm just excited because it, so it just aligns not just what's going on with our world today, uh, but also with a lot of the initiatives here uh, in Grand Traverse um, region, particularly around moving the needle on youth mental health. So again, thank you on behalf of every uh, Traverse City uh, Area Public Schools, and, and we can't wait to tell you more about how it goes. Thank you so much, Ty. We really appreciate all the efforts and especially the fact that youth were involved and in leading this initiative for themselves. Next up, we have the Northern Michigan Community Health Innovation Region. They have been awarded $25,000 to support their behavioral health initiative action teams. Here to tell us more about the initiative is Executive Director Jane Sinmacher. Thanks, Sakura. Um, the Community Health Innovation Regions with population health, increase health equity, and reduce unnecessary medical costs through partnerships and systems change. Residents and community partners from, the, from Northwest Michigan rank behavioral health as a top priority in the My Thrive Community Health Needs Assessment. Our data shows two things. Residents experience significant barriers when attempting to access mental health or substance use disorder services. And these barriers have been exacerbated by the stressors of the pandemic. And there's a need to move the work upstream. With leadership from Dr. Penny Foster Fishman, our team developed a detailed blueprint for action for increasing access to behavioral health services while enhancing well being and resiliency. Participants at our first behavioral health summit in November 2021 organized into small cross sector groups around blueprint strategy wins that they could quickly accomplish. 12 truly amazing teams made significant progress, progress over the next few months with staffing support from the Shire. About 150 residents and partners celebrated their accomplishments at our second summit in April, and they include a youth photo voice exhibit, results from a stigma survey, results from a mental health professional burnout survey, a map of navigators um, in, the, in the region, among many others. An emerging needs grant will enable the behavioral health action teams to continue their think big and act small approach. For example, the action team that conducted the burnout survey plans to share evidence-based strategies with organizations that they can implement themselves to retain their mental health professionals. Other action teams will create a care coordinators network, conduct an anti-stigma media campaign, or provide advocacy training. Thank you, Rotary Charities, for enabling our community to build momentum to increase access to behavioral health services and enhance wellness and resiliency. Thank you so much, Jane. A lot of moving parts there, but they seem to be in wonderful hands with the leadership and also community input of the Shire. Last but not least, we have the Grand Traverse Band of Ottawa and Chippewa Indians. They have been awarded $25,000 to support the Lower Boardman and Ottawa River Cultural Program. Here to tell us more about the initiative is Restoration Section Leader and River Ecologist, Brett Fessel. Brett? Thank you, Sakura, so much. And good afternoon, everyone. I, um, I'm gonna start out just with the uh, mission of Grand Traverse Band, Ottawa Chippewa Indians, as spoken by Tribal Council. We. The Tribal Council of the Grand Traverse Band of Ottawa and Chippewa Indians, a sovereign nation, honor our ancestors and strive to empower the well-being of our present and future generations. Our ultimate goal is to advance 
our nation into an era of increased governmental vigilance and promotes and protects our culture, sovereignty, health, education, treaty rights, natural resources, and financial stability. So why now um, this grant will, with the impacts of the COVID-19 um, pandemic, straining the tension limits of the deepest threads of human connectedness and relationship, uh, coupled with ex exponential increases in requests for tribal consultation, consequent to national or even global efforts and initiatives to bring along overdue acknowledgement to the exercise of diversity, equity, and inclusion, at all levels of governance and organization, GTP staff have, from various governmental departments, including language and culture, natural resources, education, and others have been stretched to, if not far beyond the capacity to meet the desired expectations to engage with many local and regional efforts to elevate tribal cultural awareness in and among local communities that are largely non-tribal in composition and substantially deficient in tribal cultural awareness, uh, despite their relative proximity to, his, to the historic and existing tribal communities. Um, so in an effort to foster this new, a newly emerging model of, of radical interdependency, if you will, among um, government, non-government, local community leadership, funds from the Rotary Charities will be coupled with uh, federal grants that uh, have been received uh, by our restoration program, primarily centered on ecosystem services, restoration and promotion. And we use to support a tribal community advisory team, also known as a cultural rivers and education and communications team in efforts to deepen the acknowledgement and local and regional awareness of tribal language, culture and traditions in local non-tribal community spaces with particular focus on efforts to strengthening community connections around water. Uh, from, a, from an array of uh, funding from an array of sources like that from Rotary continues to be critical in efforts to help us help you in matters of tribal cultural understanding, acknowledgement and long-term relationship building centered on trust and respect. And I, I genuinely uh, thank Rotary Charities for the opportunity to, um, to kind of move this ball forward. It's a long overdue and uh, needed in the, in the local community. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brett. We are truly humbled and honored to be part of this project and can't wait to see all of the new stories and old stories that are, will be resurrected through these efforts. Thank you so much. With that, uh, that is the conclusion of our Emerging Needs Grant Award announcement. And I'd like to invite everyone to turn their cameras back on so we could have a little moment of celebration as we are first hearing among this group, uh, the fellow uh, funded projects and really truly celebrating the great work that is happening in our region uh, for the future. Thank you guys so Thank much. You. Such a wonderful group and we can't wait to keep sharing the wonderful news and wonderful project developments that we know are sure to come. Thank you so much.